Something that I get asked in both my YouTube and Instagram comments all the time is whether guinea pigs or rabbits make better pets or whether somebody should get guinea pigs or rabbits. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing my experience owning both of these types of animals and also my opinions and recommendations to help you decide whether guinea pigs or rabbits would be a better fit for you. Before we jump into it, hi, my name is Allison. If you are new here, if you wanna learn more about guinea pig or rabbit care so that you can give your pet the happiest and healthiest life possible, you are in the right place. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and subscribe to my channel. I make new videos every single week. So I think a lot of the question of whether someone should get a guinea pig or rabbit comes from people thinking that guinea pigs and rabbits have very similar care requirements and are very similar animals to keep. This is not necessarily always the case, so we're gonna talk about the similarities and differences between guinea pigs and rabbits, and I'm gonna be giving my experience and opinions on whether guinea pigs or rabbits would be better for a specific type of person based on each of these different things that we are going to talk about. So let's go ahead and just jump right in, starting with the thing that is most important in my mind, which is that guinea pigs and rabbits are both very social animals. The very first thing I always let people know whether they are considering guinea pigs or rabbits is that these animals are very social and they really should not be kept alone in pretty much any situation. They do much, much better with a friend, so keeping a pair of guinea pigs or a pair of rabbits really is an essential part of keeping them. Guinea pigs need to live in at least pairs and it's usually pretty easy to bond them as long as you kind of do your research, know what you're doing, and set them up for success with the bonding process. Rabbits should also live in at least pairs. It can be a little bit more tricky to do bonding with rabbits, so I usually recommend people try to find a pre-bonded pair if they don't wanna mess with trying to learn how to bond rabbits themselves, especially if they are a first time rabbit owner. So either guinea pigs or rabbits need to be kept in pairs. A basic difference I wanna share right off the bat is the difference in the life expectancy between guinea pigs and rabbits. It can seem a little bit morbid to think about, but how long you're gonna be responsible for the care of an animal over the duration of its life is something you actually should be taking into consideration when you're considering if a certain pet is right for you. Guinea pigs live on average about five to seven years and rabbits usually live about eight to 12 years. So there is a difference there. I've met a lot of people that are actually very surprised when I tell them how long a rabbit or guinea pig can live because I think a lot of people think Guinea pigs and rabbits are pretty much just like hamsters or mice that only live two to three years. So a guinea pig is a five to seven year commitment, a bunny is an eight to 12 year commitment. So that definitely needs to be something that you think about when you're considering if your life is gonna be changing in the future or how long you're gonna to want to be responsible for an animal. Obviously, none of us know what the future holds, but make sure to consider the life expectancy of your pet and how life changes over the next five to 10 years could potentially affect your pet ownership. Next up, we are going to talk about housing. And this is really where the difference starts between whether guinea pigs or rabbits would be a better fit for someone's lifestyle. Guinea pigs tend to be a little bit easier to house than rabbits because they can be kept in a cage full time as long as they are given enough space. The minimum size of a cage for two guinea pigs is seven and a half square feet with about 10 and a half square feet, the more preferred size. While they do need a bigger cage than most people think, the fact that they can be kept in a cage full time can make them a better fit for someone living in a small space, like an apartment or keeping their pets in their bedroom. While playtime outside their cage is really nice to give your guinea pigs, it's not necessarily a requirement the way it is with bunnies, as long as the guinea pigs have a large enough space. For example, I have seven guinea pigs all housed in one room, and all of them have a cage size that is larger than the minimum. That same room size is only really big enough for two bunnies. I always tell people that rabbits are very much a lifestyle pet, and there's a couple reasons for that. First off, rabbits cannot live in a cage full time, and I personally don't recommend them living in a cage at all. I recommend keeping rabbits in an X-Pen or CNC cage, but even then they need plenty of playtime every single day. Rabbits are pretty smart, which makes litter training them really easy, and it also can make it a little easier to train them, which makes playtime you know, a little bit easier if they'll come when you call or they understand the word no. Rabbits are really good at getting into things that they shouldn't, so you do have to make sure you bunny proof the space they're going to have playtime, make sure to cover cords and all those different things. But playtime really is essential, so make sure if you are thinking about getting a rabbit, you have an area that they can have safe playtime that you can bunny proof and keep ready for them. 
I honestly think having bunnies is a little bit more like having cats than having guinea pigs. My rabbits are free roam and are litter trained, so they kind of just roam around our house all the time the same way that a cat would. I would say the housing requirement is the biggest difference to consider between getting guinea pigs and rabbits. If you are more limited on space and need to have your pet in just one area of your house or your bedroom, then I would say guinea pigs would be the better choice. If you're okay with your pet needing a little bit more space and having a set room they can explore and play in, then bunnies might fit into your lifestyle just fine. Next up, we're gonna talk about daily care. And again, there are some differences in the daily care between guinea pigs and rabbits that make one or the other better for different types of lifestyles. Guinea pigs can potentially require more daily care than rabbits do. While they need the normal things like daily hay, veggies, water, and some attention, if you are using fleece with your guinea pigs, they're going to require more daily upkeep. Fleece requires daily cage maintenance, spot cleaning the cage, making sure that there's no wet spots. If you're not doing daily maintenance on a fleece guinea pig cage, then you are setting your pets up for a respiratory infection. So definitely requires daily cage maintenance when it comes to guinea pigs. On the other hand, while rabbits do need some of the same daily things like hay, veggies, and water, they don't necessarily need as much daily cleaning. The most cleaning you're probably going to be doing with your rabbits if they are litter box trained is cleaning the litter box. And depending on your litter box setup and how many bunnies you have, you might not need to clean that every single day. My bunny's litter box only needs cleaned every other day to every three days because they have a pretty large litter box and it's just the two of them using it. So it really can depend on your specific rabbits and your specific litter box setup. So while they might not need as much daily cleaning upkeep as guinea pigs, rabbits do have some other requirements that guinea pigs don't. In my opinion, rabbits need a lot more attention. As I mentioned before, they need daily playtime and rabbits can very easily get bored. Like I said, they are very smart animals and they need a lot more enrichment than guinea pigs do. They can get into a lot of things and when they don't have the enrichment, toys to keep them busy, things to keep them interested, things to chew, then that's when they start being destructive and getting into things that you don't necessarily want them to get into. So providing them with a bunny proof play area every single day for at least a couple hours, they can get out, explore, get interested in their environment, play with some toys, provide some enrichment toys that make them think, make them work for food. That is all stuff that rabbits really need on a daily basis that guinea pigs kind of don't. So the best way I can describe it is that guinea pigs require more daily like cleaning and upkeep while rabbits require more attention and interaction. So depending on what kind of lifestyle you have, if you'd rather do more cleaning each day and just spend a little bit of time with your pets, then guinea pigs might be the way to go. But if you'd rather do less cleaning and spend a lot more time with your pets, then rabbits could be the better pet for you. So talking about interacting with your pets leads us to handling. So in general, both guinea pigs and rabbits are prey animals, which means they're always going to be a little bit more on the timid or skittish side. Obviously this depends on the particular animal. You could end up with a guinea pig that absolutely loves being picked up and carried around. You could end up with a rabbit that absolutely hates human contact. In general, I wanna talk about the differences in the handling and behavior of my guinea pigs and rabbits. So in general, guinea pigs are not as smart as rabbits, so they're never going to really love being picked up. If you think about it in the wild, the only time a guinea pig would be picked up is if a predator got it. So most guinea pigs don't like being picked up and don't like being handled. You definitely can work on taming with your guinea pigs. A lot of them learn that when they're being picked up, that doesn't mean that they're going to be eaten and they get a lot more comfortable with it. But some guinea pigs are just never going to love it. You might have a guinea pig that will never let you pet them in their cage. You might have one really timid guinea pig and one really outgoing pig. It really just depends on their personality. I have guinea pigs that will sometimes let me pet them in the cage. I have some that will not let me anywhere close to them in the cage. None of them like being picked up, but most of them calm down and are okay being cuddled or handled once they're out of their cage. So it really just depends on your specific guinea pigs. Rabbits also do not like being picked up for pretty much the same reason as guinea pigs. There's no situation in the wild they would be picked up unless a predator had a hold of them. Their prey instincts kick in, so being picked up is actually pretty stressful for them. I personally don't think there's any reason to be picking up your rabbit on a regular basis. As long as you've done it enough to get them used to things like nail clipping, 
health checks, if they need any kind of vet care, as long as they can be handled well enough to do things like that without super overstressing them, that's good enough for me. I don't think there's any reason to be picking them up all the time or carrying them around unless they're okay with it. But in general, most rabbits don't like being picked up, will show you they don't wanna be picked up, and I don't see a reason to pick them up. However, unlike guinea pigs, a lot of rabbits do like being pet and do like attention as long as all four feet are on the ground. For example, our newest bunny, Mac, absolutely loves human attention. She will groom us, she will lick us, she'll hop up in our laps, she'll hop up on the couch and sit with us. She loves being pet, she loves attention, but she doesn't like being picked up. So find the balance for your own rabbit on what they can tolerate, what they like, and just go with that. Last but not least, we are going to talk about vet costs. So vet costs between guinea pigs and rabbits can be vastly different. And this can depend on your location and the experience of your vet and what they charge. But in general, I spend quite a bit more on vet costs for my rabbits than I do on my guinea pigs. If and when your pet needs to go to the vet, you wanna make sure that you have thought ahead on whether you can afford the cost of their care. And to give you an example, at my vet, a wellness checkup for a guinea pig costs about $40 and a wellness checkup for a rabbit costs about $55. So already there is a difference in just the cost of them being seen by a vet. Regardless of what type of pet you have, part of being a responsible pet owner is making sure you have funds available if your pet suddenly does need to go to the vet. One of the biggest health cost differences between guinea pigs and rabbits is that pretty much all rabbits need to be fixed. In my opinion, any rabbit should be fixed because if they are not, there can be pretty significant health consequences as the bunny gets older. So if you are adopting rabbits that are not already fixed, that is something you're going to have to pay for. It can really depend on location, on how much that's going to cost, but know that if you're getting bunnies that aren't fixed, it is in their best interest to do that and that's something you're going to have to spend money on. Having a good exotic vet available when your pet needs it is part of being a responsible pet owner, so make sure to take this consideration seriously. You are going to have to pay for vet costs at some point. All animals have some sort of issue or need a wellness check at some point in their lives. Make sure to think about how much you're going to be able to afford and what type of vet budget you're going to have for whatever type of animal that you get. All right, so this is not a comprehensive guide on guinea pigs or rabbits, but hopefully this video gave you a good start to understand whether guinea pigs or rabbits would be a better fit for your lifestyle. As with considering bringing any new pet into your family, make sure to do more research and understand what you're getting into before you bring a new pet home. As another resource for you guys, here are my videos on guinea pig care and rabbit care, and I will also link my care guides down in the description that are on my website so you can have another resource resource for getting started with your research. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one. Bye!